Welcome back. The World Igbo Congress has rejected the security outfit codenamed Ibubayago, which was recently set up by governors of the Southeast region. The group instead advised governors of the region to support the Eastern Security Network, ESN, so it can become a strong security outfit for the Igbo ethnic group. They were also encouraged to refuse to be tools in the hands of the Fulani ethnic group who have vowed to conquer Nigeria. Now, joining us to discuss this is Uche Okuku, the Secretary General of Hanez and Dibo, and Obonna Ngoke, a politician. Good evening to you, uh, gentlemen. Many thanks for joining us. Uh, let me start with you, Mr. Obonna Ngoke. Uh, looking at uh, what happened not too long ago with the formation of uh, um, uh, Abu Bago in Owe just last week, uh, a lot of people you know, from different angles have said that uh, it was a hasty, uh, you know, conclusion by the Southeast governor. What are your take, or what is your take rather concerning that? Do you really think it was hastily done in the wake of the you know, Igbo Congress asking them to you know, boost uh, the Eastern Security Network, rather? Okay, uh, let me thank you for the opportunity. I'm first right away that uh, there are widespread concerns across, across the country as a result of growing insecurity and uh, growing need to among the people to have alternatives when it comes to security protection. So the Ibukagu thing, which is like the Omopiku response in the Southwest and uh, the Sierra JTF in the North, all point in one direction. By that time, as much as possible to be safe. And also, the fact that many of us living in this country who are scared of the unknown want the best of security arrangements that will enable them to sleep with their two eyes closed. All right, uh, but uh, do you think uh, right now that uh, it is what is needed right now? Because uh, the IPOB and the ESN, they're saying that uh, the governors are, are planning on compiling their names and that they are going to make uh, the, the Southeast uh, hot if uh, you know, their way is not really uh, the way at the end of the day. I, I think that uh, we have been talking about non-state actors trying to muzzle their way into the way we live and operate in Nigeria. And I, I believe that the response by the South East governors uh, was germane. They, they cannot sit down and fold their hands and uh, allow the issue of security, particularly at a time that even at the level of the National Assembly, people are talking about the devolution of powers. For some persons, non-state actors to take control of security-related issues. No, that shouldn't happen. So we should be full of praise for Southeast governors for taking uh, uh, what I consider preemptive position uh, and also engendering confidence uh, amongst the, the people of the Southeast. The support that uh, Haneze, for example, is throwing uh, behind what the governors are doing at this time. So just clearly that we, we need to build on our security. Here we are, we have a group of persons, of course the police is accusing IPOP of uh, responsibility in the Mopombe. We have seen police stations attacked. We have seen people uh, put at risk by non-state actors. And so we cannot, we cannot. I, I, I believe that uh, if we genuinely want to talk about security in this country, then we should be talking about a system which includes the security agencies and which needs the support of locals. And I think that's the background behind the Bube Agu. All right, thank you. Let's uh, bring in Mr. Okuku into this conversation right now. You have heard the position of um, the World Igbo Congress, and specifically they are saying that uh, the Southeast governor should rather incorporate the ESN, uh, which uh, you know, is not legal, you know, by the way. So what is your particular position concerning that? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, first, let me correct... Uh, uh, an impression. I'm the Deputy President General of Hanes yeah, Sorry about that. I was the Secretary General of the organization from January 2017 
to January 2021. On 2020, uh, January 9, 2021, I was elected the Deputy President General. All right, well, noted, uh, sir. Yeah, go ahead, sir. My position is in this way. Oh. First, the governors are not speaking for the Ohanese because Ohanese speaks for the entire Igbos. And the governors clearly said they were speaking for the uh, a part of uh, the Ohanese constituency, which is which they said is the southeast. Uh, there are Igbos in states outside the southeast, River State, Delta, Akwaibom, in those states. So they are not speaking for Ohanese. Two, I vehemently oppose. I vehemently oppose, I repeat it for the third time, I vehemently oppose anything that will put hands, arms and ammunition, in, instruments of violence in the hands of untrained persons. Oh. Whether you call them Amato Kuni Yoruba land or you call them IPOP, uh, Eastern yes. uh, Security Network, or you call them Ibubago, whatever you call them. I will never support the army of civilians who are not trained and who don't understand rules of engagement. Nigerians will regret it in the future. They will turn out to become local militias and, and maim the people. What the Nigerian state needs today is to increase the number of policemen, recruit more police, more civil defense, more DSS, train them, arm them, and ensure they, engage, they obey the rules of engagement. I don't support arming civilians. All right. Since the Ohanese uh, does not um, support um, Ibubuagu and, of course, um, the ESN or other civilians um, bearing arms, uh, there's been a space of insecurity in the southeastern part of the country. We are all aware of what has happened in Imo State uh, in, just recently. So just what uh, would you um, prefer as the immediate solutions to all of these uh, security challenges uh, in the immediacy bedeviling the southeast? I, I support, I support collaboration between the states and the community. To in the extent sense? of intelligence gathering, okay. intelligence gathering, and then reporting, passing over that intelligence to the security agencies. That is the extent to which I can support a collaboration. But I can never support arming civilians because you cannot control them. You cannot determine what they will do with arms. All right, let's, uh, let's bring our other guests uh, into this conversation. You have heard the position of Mr. Okuku. He says uh, it's not in the best interest of the Southeast, uh, you know, state of, or even Nigeria to uh, give arms, uh, you know, to civilians who are not really trained uh, to handle uh, all of these issues of um, pockets of securities that, that uh, just bedeviling the nation and, of course, indeed, the Southeast. Now, what would you really advise in the immediacy? How do we begin to, you know, nip this issue of security in the board? Because uh, it is ever increasing by the day in the Southeast. Hello, can you hear me? All right, we'll take a quick break. We'll be back and talk some more. Stay with us. Welcome back. It's still Plus Politics. Uh, let's talk now to a one long okay, a politician. Uh, Uche Okuku of uh, the Ohadese Nibo is against uh, you know, giving arms to civilians who are not uh, ordinarily trained uh, to handle that. You know? So with all the growing insecurity in the Southeast, uh, in the immediacy now, what would you prefer as uh, solutions? Uh, my... My brother, the biggest problem facing this country is we take decisions and tend to implement decisions without a detailed study. We must distinguish between planned criminality and spontaneous reaction. If a, pe a people gather and go and break up prison, a people gather and bomb police stations, that is a criminal act. It is because the state has failed to investigate crime, arrest the culprits, and put them on trial. 
That is why people are bold enough to commit crime. It is beyond issue of breaking police stations and uh, prisons and so on. You see daily people are beheaded, people are raped, people are maimed, and robbers are ravaging everywhere. The state must be prepared. The first duty of the state is to protect lives and property. They must take all practical steps to ensure that they develop capacity to protect lives and property. If because there is a crime somewhere or the violation of the law somewhere, then you now arm civilians, which means as it increases, you will continue to arm civilians and arm civilians until all civilians will possess arms and they may abuse it. This state will return it to Somalia, where you don't know who, who you are talking to. Everybody is a militia holding arms. And the arms will be used against the state and the state actors. And that is my fear. All right, let me bring you back now, Mr. Uche Okoko. Let me just read out something to you by the WIC over the weekend. Uh, they said that the Southeast governors need to revitalize their justice department and begin to prosecute violators of the open grazing law by enforcing the laws in their book. It will help in checking the marauding Fulani herdsmen, creating a stereotype security outfit now is no longer a priority than helping in strengthening the existing ESN. So specifically, do you really think that um, anti-open grazing, you know, would be the issue to solving all of the uh, myriads of um, headsmen attack in the southeast. I have spoken in the past on grazing. I have, I had advocated that the state must intervene mm. to uh, uh, to ensuring that the full of the headsmen or other headsmen, not necessarily the full of this. Of course, you will you saw. When cattle entered, cows entered Wolosho in Cass house, the owner of those cows were not the Fulanese, they were Yoruba man. The Yoruba man had those cows. But he got the Fulani to rear them. So we must equally investigate and go beyond the Fulani herdsmen. But you don't have right, and I say it, whether the Fulani herdsmen, whether ESM, whether the Yoruba group, Nobody has the right to possess illegal weapons. And that is my fear. And I have said in the past that the states should come together and provide grazing grants for cattle breeders. The, in recent times, the cattle breeders are beyond the full of You have cattle breeders in Yoruba. You have Igbos who own cattle. If the state provides the facilities for them, the cattle will stop roaming the streets and there will be there will be no problems between the cattle uh, 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 breeders and the farmers. All right, so Mr. Okuku, uh, just to finalize uh, your thoughts right now on this particular issue, what should be done with the ESN and in your position, is it that uh, the Southeast governors uh, are wrong completely to have uh, indeed talked about uh, forging a common front to end insecurity in their terrain? Well, I have said I'm, I'm not supporting ESL, I'm not supporting the Bubago. I have told you, if we don't, we are not careful, there will be breakdown of law and order in the East, and it will be between the ESM and the Bubago. You know, when you stare into the void, the void will consume you. There was no details for this, no law backing it, no rules of engagement, no training. Vote for the ESM and the Bubago, so we have to be very careful. All right, thank you for your thoughts. Uh, let's get um, your final uh, thoughts on this matter now, uh, Mr. Obodna Ongoke. You know, there is like um, uh, uh, a battle of Georgia between uh, the Southeast governors, the ESM, and the IPOB. Just how do we begin to make sure that uh, we bring everybody to a common front and uh, ensure that at the end of the day, the Southeast is completely secure? I think that we have been talking about the devolution of power in this country and increasingly talking about community policing. Now, the idea of community policing simply suggests that people would be exposed to training. Now, I think that what the governors of the counties have done is acknowledge that it, there is a need, a strong need to set up a complementary security apparatus that will work hand in hand with the existing security agencies. 
Now, the issue of training and all that would eventually be worked out. So there is no way we can say at this point that guns will be placed in the hands of persons who are incompetent. But perhaps we know that even persons who are not doing with intelligence collaborate with the police and provide information. They may not. These gun wielding persons that uh, Uchokoku is afraid of may not, may not. These both governors have said that the issue of bearing weapons will be something that they will consider. Oh. But perhaps there are other ways by which the Bubangu could become useful in managing security related issues in the South East. Now, I think we should be forward going in the country sometimes. We are claiming that security is not sufficient, that the uh, existing infrastructure is not good enough to protect Nigeria. And we are trying, Nigerians are beginning to say, let's think a little outside the box. Let's give some persons the responsibility. But does it, to bother you? does it worry you that uh, not much was done in terms of a um, legal framework before the announcement of the Ibubeago? Okay, I, I, I believe that there is enough room to bring people around to people. What has come to talk about an idea. Now, how this idea will work definitely will be worked out by major stakeholders. Now, the governor, who bear the brunt of maintaining law and order in their state, believe that there is a need, a strong need at that, to get some persons to support ongoing efforts that are related to security matters. And I, I, I believe, too, that they have experts working with them and that these matters have been thought through. But what should happen, in my view, is that we live in an era when technology must be deployed. We live in an era where we, we must encourage the idea of consultation. And that when this, all of these are put together and taken together, all right. that we can do something. All right, thank and you we so much for your comments. The, the police force, which may operate within the state. All right, thank you so much indeed, Mr. Okay. With the federal authority. The same way as All right, uh, we, we have to go on this conversation. Thank you so much for sharing your thought on the issue of uh, Ibu Bagu and, of course, uh, the ESN with us on Plus Politics. We'll take a short break now, and when we return, I'll be giving you my take. Stay with us. Well, now that Isa Pantami has renounced his extremist ideology, he should do what is right and needful. If he truly wants to make up for his past, he should continue the work of engaging and de-radicalizing young jihadists, not handling national affairs. Then for Ibu Bago, what are the things on ground before the formation of Ibu Bago? Is there any legal backing to Ibu Bago? The Eastern Security Network that was formed, we all agree that it is illegal and cannot take charge of the security space in that area. There is nothing on ground in the southeast to support Ibu Bago, so it is quite unfortunate. It's just like putting the cart before the horse. And that's Plus Politics. I am Justin Kadonia. We turn again 7 p.m. tomorrow. Bye for now. <laughs>